This program is sponsored by Dave Stahl. Start your engines. Race fans, you are tuning into the only motorsports show in San Diego. Your host, Dave Stahl, and the racing school teacher, Brittany Sandoval, are taking you to the green flag, covering everything from your top-notch national drivers and crew chiefs right down to your local kid racers and racetracks. Strap in. It's Checkers and Wreckers on Racer Radio. Folks, hey, welcome to Racer Radio, FM 96.1 AM 1170. The answer. This hour is brought to you by Southwest Point of Sale. If you have a business and you're in dire need of a cashier and you can't hang on to one long enough, you know, labor costs are getting kind of high, you might want to check out self-checkout. Walmart does it, Home Depot, Costco, they all do it. It might be the way to go. Give these guys a call at 800-540-2149. They'll come out to your business, take a look, and if their system fits your system, you're golden. They've got uh, more than 100, over 150 years of total service experience within their team. Jeff and Mark have been doing this since the, uh, geez, since the 70s. And the beauty is, if you're open, they're open. They'll give you a seven-day, 24-hour day service, no matter where they are, because they do travel a lot. Uh, I can attest to that. So, interested, 800-540-2149 and Dragonfly, which is a Napa Auto Care ASC certified shop. I just They just came on board. Welcome aboard. Just And I love Napa, and I love their auto care service. You get three-year, 36,000-mile service, and you get, uh, you know, you get it all. Napa Auto Care, AAA, ASC certified. So, go to dragonflyauto.com, make an appointment. Tell them you heard it right here on KCBQ and thank them for sponsoring. 619 704 2280. Boy, flash in the pan. I knew, I knew our special guest today back in the days of KUSI. <laughs> and she showed me a bruise on her thigh <laughs> that was the size of a football. You remember that? <laughs> I do. Was that your first time you got knocked out, right? Uh, yeah, that was during Knocked Out. Yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah, got She'll right. have to tell you. All right. So, Brittany, uh, I don't know how long yeah. you've known Desi. Um, 35 minutes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I do, I do uh, enjoy what I've found out so far. She's a woman who loves moto and metal. Yep. And, yeah. well. And, and dirt. Dirt. Yeah. Wait, what are you? Wait. Oh, yeah, yeah. Born dirty. Yes. That's what it is. Yeah. Born she, dirty. And did you tell you how that came about? I might have done a little research. Um, yeah. So I, I, what I gathered is you started going to the desert when you were three months old. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yep. Yeah. She's been stalking. Uh, yeah. yeah, she's a stalker. I Watch research out my guests a little bit. <laughs> stalking research. Um, yes. Um, <laughs> and but I, I love it. I'm so glad we finally got to sit down because as I was telling you off air, at least once a week, my students see me wearing a sweatshirt or a hat that says "Girls Love Dirt." Nice. Um, I love to play in the dirt as well. <laughs> nice. Yeah, we've been talking about racing. She yeah. does dwarf cars, so that's dwarf cool. Cars, I gotta go check yes. that out now. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, no, yeah, that's just what you need. Uh, before we get uh, too far, uh, for our listeners, we have uh, Desiree Bates in house, and she. We are also joined by. Oh, he's holding. Okay, hi Justin, and we have also Justin Garner, and he is not going to speak too much. But I hear maybe we'll hear some of his titles: a crew member, fan, pit crew chief. Pit crew chief, yep. barbecue, barbecue, Q chief. <laughs> <laughs> so just so you know, we have Desiree Bates in studio. Thank you for having me. Yeah, we got lots to talk about too. Yeah. And like, I, I remember when she, I mean she's always been into motorcycles, but and dirt. But I remember that when we were at KUSI, you know, I think you, that's when you got your first dirt bike. Yeah, probably. What? Sounds about right. Yeah. And it was, uh, she was so excited. Can we get a date, like a year? What are we talking what about? was that in the... I was like, how do... Well, my first, my well, my Honda 450 was in 05. Yeah. So I was going to say, it had to be in 05, that area, 06, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I remember the first race she was going to do. Oh, my God, she was so excited. She couldn't even really see straight. What kind? You've done a variety. District 38 was where I started. Okay. Yeah. And then I, so I got the dirt bike and just immediately wanted to start racing, you know, and um, went out to District 38. And How'd that go for you? <clears throat> I think I, that's when I knocked myself okay. out. Okay. 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 <laughs> you know. Yeah. Just full throttle. <laughs> yeah. 
I don't remember the rest of the race, though. I just remember going over the handlebars, and next thing you know, I was in the Lazar trailer, and um, okay. they were cutting my, my gear off me, and no. I'm like, no, not the boots! Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. 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 And then I remember asking if my bike was okay. Oh, and That was like the first thing I cared about was, but how's the bike? Uh, my first crash when I was four into a sandbox, same thing. I cried because I'd bent my forks. Yeah. Yeah, I was very upset about that. Now, so was it full throttle that may have led to that knockout? And, yeah. And have we changed our ways? No. Okay. <laughs> I was going <laughs> to say. Just got better at them. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> you bounce better yeah. now. So you've been, are you still doing 38 or what have you moved on to? Yeah, intermittently I do District 38. Um, I just finished an apprenticeship with uh, the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. Um, and by the way, congratulations. Thank you. Yep. So That's been a long. Five years. Wow. So I kind of just been racing on and off for so five years. So you're a journeyman now? Journeyman wireman. Congratulations. Yep. So if I need uh, my 110 plugged in, you can do it? Yes. I hate electricity. I, I, I don't mind anymore. At first, I was like, I don't know about this, but, you know, because I, I thought I wanted to be a welder, and I was like, I don't know about this electrical stuff. Because that's what I thought. What happened with the welding? Oh, because your love for metal. Yeah. I wanted to be, a, I wanted to go the welding route, but my idea of going the welding route was I wanted to fabricate sand cars, and yeah. that was what I wanted to do. And a friend of mine just kind of like was trying to talk me out of it because there's no, I wanted to be union. I wanted to have a pension. I wanted to have, you know, um, a career sure, basically. And sure. no offense to fabricators by any means. Um, Cause obviously that's the route I would like to go. And they have none of the above. But they don't have that in right. a mom and pop shop. There's no pension. They can't afford a pension. The wages probably aren't using union mm-hmm, wages, mm-hmm. you know? And so again, I'm not, you know, offending anybody, but um, that's just the why I chose the electrical route. But you still weld. Yes. For fun. You, well, yes. yeah, because you do ornamental now. Yeah, I do metal art. Right. Yep. I do trophies for the San Diego Off-Road Coalition events. And really stuff. nice trophies. Yeah, they turned out good. Have. Yeah. It, <laughs> if I may say so myself. I yeah. mean, I think so. <laughs> I think so, too. Otherwise, they wouldn't be using you every time. Yeah, right? Yeah. Now they need it to be done. So, did you ever get into a cage? Or no. Or you stake it on motorcycles? Well, I have my sand rail, but I just haven't raced it. Yeah. I, I reached out. I was looking at Chenoweth. I was like, man, I have a Chenoweth. Maybe Wasn't that your dad's? Me. Yeah, my dad built it. Yeah, I remember. Mm-hmm. See, you think I remember that, did you? No. Yeah. I stay on top. So, I was, I'm a stalker, too. We're rebuilding <laughs> it. Justin and I are putting a new transmission in it. So right. we're going to... I'd like to race it, but it's just not a raceable car. No, no, yeah. no. It's, it's, yeah, it'll break before it'll win. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. Well, it's it proven. is. Yeah, it is heavy. No, it's proven itself to us when we went off a cliff with it. A oh, cliff. Off a cliff. Yeah. No. Yeah. So we did a <laughs> a cliff. <laughs> Who was behind the wheel? Who Jeez, was? guess. Oh, okay. Desiree was behind the wheel on that. <laughs> yeah. And you, were you the passenger, Justin? Yeah. On that was, particular. Uh, yeah. Father's Day two years ago, we were driving around uh, Akatia Wells, and we encountered a washout that was pretty new. It was a night it race was, or night ride. It was about. Oh, oh. those are the worst. Mm-hmm. It was about 18 foot deep, and we happened Stop. to be taking the widest turn and flew right into it. But uh, How fast? We are going probably 30. That's ugly. She turned the wheel hard, so our momentum carried us left. So we didn't hit front end that hard, but it spun us around completely. Luckily, we instead of indoing, going over, yeah. Yeah. we spun more left. Oh. And so the we were facing the direction in which we entered. <laughs> so we had done a complete, you know, what? 180, 180. in the air. <laughs> yeah, in the air. Or it, once it, like, nosedived, it spun all the way around. And you just sort of said, what the hell? Yeah, well, yeah, it happened so fast. I did not expect to be that high, I mean, to fly from that high. And then I got out and I looked up and the walls were, like, above the whip on the buggy. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, thank goodness for five-point harness seatbelts. Yes. Thank goodness for this roll cage protecting us right now. Helmets? Yes. You know, no helmets. No helmets. No, yeah. Wow. Did you have any trouble getting out? Yeah. yeah. Well, luckily the buggy's so light that my friends were able to just pick up the front end, you know, move it around, and then uh-huh. like we broke some sand rocks and they towed the buggy out. The only thing, I mean, we had a little bit of whiplash, um, bent yeah. tie rod, and you know, uh, bent rims. And that's wow. it. That buggy survived. So that's why. Yeah, that it, buggy impressed me <laughs> with how well it saved us. It's pretty safe. Yeah. Just can't go anywhere without crashing. <laughs> yeah, I'm on the fence now whether I'm going to encourage her to get in the dwarf car or not. Yeah, right? I, I don't know because there's their well, solid wall. She only knows on one way, and that's flat out. Yeah. And yeah. whatever. 
Well, in my defense, I don't have a windshield, you know, and so it was dusty. And then well, all nighttime. of a sudden, yeah, it was nighttime. nighttime. And then uh, I have incandescent bulbs from 19, you know, whenever the buggy was built. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, the visibility wasn't the best. Um, so you could use a little update. Yeah, and he bought me some new Baja Designs headlights since then that are ah. period correct and they look great. And um, so. And they're bright. They're bright. Yeah. It cracks me up. Yeah. All right, let's take a quick break. We come back a whole lot more right here on Rachel Radio FM 961 AM 1170. The answer. folks welcome back to racer radio fm 96 1 am 1170 the answer this thing is brought to you by el cajon ford where nobody absolutely nobody treats you better than el cajon ford go to el cajon motors.com uh the 24s are in he's got tons of mavericks he's got broncos he's got uh he's got a couple of bad to the bone um raptors oh yeah and he's got regular cars too but <laughs> if you're into that go service department will work on everything in your driveway which is kind of cool uh, dave has got uh, kind of re-geared the shop to where anybody that you know owns any other vehicle would like to you know bring theirs in like when they're picking up their ford they can drop off their chevy or toyota or nissan and get quality service that's el cajon ford where nobody absolutely nobody treats you better all right we got desiree bates in the house and she's gonna run the you're going to run the Mint 400? Yeah, I yep. wanted to bring that was one of my two yeah. things. Yeah. yeah. Now that we know she's fearless. Yeah. <laughs> Is this your first time at the Mint? Yep. Iron Man. Yeah, Iron Manning it. Oh. Mm-hmm. And, and so for folks that don't know what that means. It means I'm doing it by myself. It's normally a team race. Mm-hmm. You swap off riders, but I'm doing it by myself. And on top of that, there's not a women's Iron Man. Just yeah, you're just, just Iron Man. Just Iron you're just Iron, Iron Man. Man. Yeah. yeah. How many other women you th- will run it? You know? I have no idea. Okay, I've never done it before. She won't um, know till she beats them all. Yeah, what? right. Have, yeah. You done, have you done a history of it? I mean, to just see if any other women have ever run it. I'm sure they have. I mean, I know I've not specifically seeked out how many women have yeah, done it because yeah. they can do it in a woman's class as a team. I don't know how many have done it as an Ironman. Mm-hmm. Right. You got a sponsor? Yeah, International stand Brotherhood up. of Wait, Electrical stand Workers. Stand up, Justin. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, all kidding. Right. So, yep, I'm very proud to um, be one of the first racers for our local. Um, I'm sponsored by our local 569, IBEW. I'm oh, sponsored by the women's organization within the IBEW called the United Sparkies. Um, I love it, yeah. And then um, I've got, you know, from my metal days, um, I've got American Laser Fab on board, um, competitive metals, the Iron Door, and Snap-on Tools. Fantastic. Right? Who would have thought, huh? Yeah. Because I know you're not much of a salesman. Come back from a you're, five year. You're not much of a salesman. No, I I, I didn't expect to get any of, anybody on board really, but I just kind of took a shot in the dark because I knew the mint was going to be expensive. I haven't raced really much in five years. I didn't really expect a lot of people to jump on board, but they all did. Wow. You know, cause they've been supporting me for a while now. You know, as far as just you know, well, the metal competitive metals and um, American Laser Fab and the Iron Door, they've been sponsoring me as far as the Dirt Rider Foundation mm-hmm. and Fight for Ocotillo Wells. Um, so when I reached out and told them this, that I'm going to be a tradeswoman racing for, you know, women in the trades, they jumped on board and were like, yes, wow. we want to do this. So that is fantastic. That's pretty cool. So the 400, let me guess, 400 miles. Yeah. Is it? I, I didn't, that's something I wanted to clarify. I didn't know if it was 400 miles for the cars and less for the motorcycles. So from what I understand, it's going to be like a Grand Prix style where once the pros cross the finish line in like, let's say I get one lap less than there. So I, my race would be shorter All right. based once... on the fact that they're faster. And where does okay. it, where do you go? Where's, what's, where's the, where's the uh, route? Prim. Mm-hmm. It's based oh. in Prim, Nevada. Okay, mm-hmm. all right. So you're not going out into the into Mexico or the desert. No. Oh no, no. Mm-hmm. And get lost. Yeah. Originally, wasn't it from the Mint Hotel in Vegas to some some other ho- uh, I don't know casino or something in Nevada or I don't know. Like uh-huh. I said, this it is was my from first a hotel to a hotel in Vegas to uh, Lake Tahoe or something like that. So is it a one day race, two day race, one day, just one day? Mm-hmm. All right. So you get up early and mm-hmm. go to bed and sleep for the rest. Yeah. 
That's that'll be nice. So what are you doing to get to to prepare? Um, so racing, mountain bikes, running, CrossFit, all the above. We were talking about how physical it is, and I brought up the fact when we had all the Barona ladies in, and we were talking to the rookie about it is physical. It's yeah. physical just to hold on. Stay and on. You stand up a lot because yeah. your legs are your own suspension. So. Yeah. It, it's wow. very physical. And the, my back is usually sore afterwards from yeah. holding on and, yeah. you know. Constantly mm-hmm. bouncing. Mm-hmm. Um, Do you wear a neck restraint or gear or protection at all? I, I kind of hear both sides of the yeah, story. Yeah, and so I have one. I used to wear the Liat brace, um, but then I've heard that it's not effective anymore, so I really don't really wear it yeah. anymore. So mm-hmm. I just don't. There's been so much, yeah, you know, back, back and, and forth. forth about it that I quit wearing it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think just conditioning is is all it's about. And what are you going to ride? My Beta 300, two-stroke Beta. Oh, wow. Two-stroke, yay. Yeah, I know. Uh, uh, What's his face? Ed's been talking about it. I guess it's a new bike, isn't it? Uh, It's a 2017. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. So, that should be fun. And Justin, you're going to crew out there? Yeah, I'm going to be running the pit crew out there. I don't exactly know what that's going to look like. Whatever is needed. All about the same. Yeah. Yeah. So when the word rookie comes out, it's to the truest form. Oh, yeah. This is yeah. going to be first. I, I'm just reading through the tech inspections. I've, I've had mm-hmm. all show up. There's a parade. Yeah, you're going to take part in that? Yeah. 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 So, uh, just to give my sponsors a shout out if yeah. possible, exactly. you know. So, exactly. um, so Wednesday we'll arrive and um, do the parade route down Fremont Street. Mm-hmm. Um, Thursday is a tech inspection. So I have to, you know, I, it's been expensive in the sense that I have to go now buy a Snell approved helmet. You know, um, I got the through the thankfully my sponsors um, afforded me the opportunity to get um, well, new tires were sent to me by Janine, Sean and Janine White from Snap on Tools and then IBEW um, and the United Sparkies, Competitive Metals, American Laser Fab, um, Snap on, am I missing one? Iron Door. They all have afforded me the opportunity to pay for now getting air mooses in my tires so I don't get flat tires. Um, you know, so it's, there's just a lot of yeah. expenses that are they now going along. Up. Yeah, I mean, I had a helmet, but I had to go buy a new one just because it's now Snell approved. So right. the mint has a lot of requirements that go along. What with about that. boots? Did you get new boots? No. Hers were good enough. They're good enough. And broken in. Uh, you don't yeah, want a new pair? Right? <laughs> I'm still breaking in my new pair. A lot to be said for that. What about your driving suit? I don't have a suit. I mean, well, I bought a new set of gear for my sponsors to put my sponsors oh, on. Oh, okay. But yeah, yeah, so I guess I got it for that, but they don't require that. Do you minute. rock a color? Of it's going to be red, white, and blue. Oh, That's okay. my that, Because it's all my sponsors are pretty much red, white, and blue. So What do you want to bet I know the number? We'll say it. Wait. Oh. 569. Oh, you changed it. Yeah, I changed my number because I got sponsored. Oh, yeah, we couldn't do the other one. Well, I don't. They, I don't know if they would frown on it or not. But I. Can I, we say what it is? I'm out of the loop, and some listeners might be six six six. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've been racing that number for 20 years. Yeah. And I finally got sponsored by my local, so I asked them. I they didn't say that they were against it or not. I just said in my proposal, I'll change my number to All five right. six nine. So and does that but, have a well, significance? For it's our, the mint, it's going to be fifty six because yeah. they don't allow three okay, digits. Two. Oh, okay. But for District Thirty Seven, she's going to be racing five six nine. Yeah, and that's the the union, right? Yeah, it's yeah. local five six nine. Yeah, yeah. So right how cool on. Is that? Yeah. Who would have thought? That's cool. I know. Way back when you and I first met, who in the world I know. would you think you'd be sitting on a radio station talking about throwing your body out on the four hundred? I know. I'm very excited, and I'm so thankful that these sponsors have afforded me the opportunity to, you know, do a bucket list race of my dreams. You know, are you picking the brain of anyone who's ridden it already? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, good. I have, I have um, friends who have raced it, and so I've been asking them all sorts of questions. Oh, I bet. Because it's they're not the information hasn't been readily available. It's not like there's an owner's manual. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Is there a route that you know already, or do all riders find out the route the night before? They do have a course map online already. Uh, yeah, so I don't, but I don't know how technical the course is going to be. Is it going to be fast, or is it going to be you know fast and technical? That I don't know. I just mm-hmm. know the route. You and know. the weather has a lot to do with yeah. it too, right? Yeah. Oh, what's an ideal temperature rain for you? I mean, a little bit of rain the night before would be mm-hmm. nice to keep the, the dust, dust down. The dust yeah. down. Subtraction um, up. Otherwise, I'm I. I don't really care if it's hot. I don't mind heat. Um, mm-hmm. Cold, I don't like. But I mean, if it's 70s, 80s, I'm okay with. 60s even, you know, um, it's fine. 
Uh, but yeah, as long as it's sunny and not W, windy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. What do you carry on you? A camel pack. I the mint is requiring me to uh, have like a, a, I don't know about a full, but a, a medical pack. Um, in the event. And then I have to have lights on. Just that's just what they require. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, just water typically. And what about navigation? There's no navigation. Not at, not at these races. They have the course marked out. The course is marked with yeah. little yeah. flags, yeah. pink little flags. Or and something. you don't yeah. need to carry fuel. No, because the laps should be short enough. That's that what I Justin's can, for. That's my yeah, job. <laughs> that's that's his job. Do you get? Ra- do you have radios that you can? So you can't communicate with the no, pits. No, I. I mean, I guess I could. I have not gone that route um, yet. Well, I'm just thinking if you have a, a mechanical and you're stuck out in the. Someone will be around. There's probably a usually sweep crew and, and yes. Pro- Yes, there's a sweep crew, and usually there's some other racer that will let somebody know. Yeah. I don't know how competitive the mint is going to be that they wouldn't stop and at least say, you know, are you okay? Do you want me to at least tell your pit? Right, right, you right. You know, right. so um, I would assume any somebody. Tra- any tracking devices on your bike that no, you're aware of? No, I think it's just a matter of like when you go through the pit, it tracks you. Mm-hmm. But there's no like actual GPS for the entire course okay. that I know of or that I've read about. Well, because, you know, sometimes they'll put a transponder, yeah. you know, like on your bike just to, so they can keep. Like if you do it off road, say the the Rebel Rally, you know you can watch online and where see they're where they're at. Yeah, see where they're where are you going? Yeah, where are you going? No, not that sophisticated. <laughs> no, it's just a matter of when you go through the checkpoint. Right. Yeah. And, and uh, I know you. You definitely want to win, but you really just want to participate and finish. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is like I said, a bucket list race for me. Yeah. Last last year, a couple months ago, I did um the twenty four hours of Glen Helen. Um, and that was that was in preparation for this race, oh. and so um, how'd you do there? She did great. Yeah, I, I she mean, did a lot. I got first place women's, but I was the only woman's team. Yeah. So I mean, not saying much, but I was just more I was more proud of the fact that I rode twenty hours. Yeah, of, of 24 the twenty four hours of Glen mm-hmm. Helen. Holy mackerel! Yeah, she did a lot. That's, that's so it really prepared me for the mint i feel like you know yeah, <laughs> yeah i would say what so is the too. estimated time for an average rider or what are you thinking as, as far as oh, hours to, out to there the for the mint mm-hmm. uh, the, uh some of the guys are saying six to eight hours oh that's nothing for you yeah. okay <laughs> what's lot, your f- a lot of people were saying that 24 was definitely more difficult than the mint would be oh, so nice. yeah oh that's good the hurdle there do you have something you fuel yourself with like peanut butter and honey sandwiches or it's tough for me to eat before a race. Um, I kind of don't eat. He forces me to eat. Yes. Good job, Justin. Um, he, and good luck. Yeah. Uh, I, I just kind of get nervous a little bit. And then until that starting gate drops, right. I, you know, I got a little nerves. Um, so, but I, it, if I can pit, then I can maybe get a snack. I don't right. know. It's going to be tough because I don't like to eat before races. Yeah. But you're going to need to. I'm going to have to. Stop. And all I can do is fuel the night before, make sure yeah. I eat some complex carbs and stuff right. and then and drink. then try to eat as early as possible so that i can eat before i get before nervous. the nerves come yeah, yeah. and yeah. drink a lot of water yeah yeah just because you don't know what the weather's got gonna the be camel like. back yeah. yeah all right let's take a quick break when we come back we're gonna talk to scott delosio we don't know what the topic is but i got a sneaky Surprise. feeling he'll be full of all kinds of great information from paris auto speedway right here on fm 96 1 am 1170 the answer Folks, welcome back. You're listening to Racer Radio, FM 961 AM 1170. The answer. This segment is brought to you by Paris Auto Speedway. If you've never been to Paris, it is absolutely amazing. Right up there on Lake Paris Road, 18700 in Paris, California. Half mile dirt slash clay track that will give you the most excitement you could ever imagine. Uh, The racing was going to start this weekend. But unfortunately, the rains changed its mind. We got Scott Delosio on the line. You gonna do a makeup or what? You, what's on the plan for you know missing last or missing Saturday? No makeup. Uh, just pick up the season. Ah. Now going to start on the twenty fourth of the month with the USAC Series Sprint Cars headlining the show. Um, also, the Senior Sprints, the Gas Chassis Young Gun Sprints, and it'll be the opener for the past car super stocks and street stocks so we'll look forward to that you know hopefully uh we're gonna have better weather 
looking at the forecast starting next Saturday, it's like, oh boy, we could be in for a bevy of rain. Well, the guys got started early. You know, they got started in February. Yeah, and yeah. You can't control the rain. I was thinking about you personally when it was still raining on Thursday and yeah. then again Friday. I was like, yeah. Yeah, I think you guys knew probably by Wednesday that it wasn't going to happen. I think it was a foregone conclusion, yeah. you know, but Don and the uh, track staff, I mean, they had their hopes up. And then when the rain came again on Thursday night, mm-hmm. that just put it uh, yeah. that put it to rest. If you're familiar with the racetrack, people are listening, the infield concession stand, um, the water had reached to that and was actually all the way around to behind the building. Oh, my gosh. So, you know, pumps were going, but when it rained again Thursday, that just put the kibosh on it. Because I'm not sure how deep the water was. I think it was like eight inches. Well, eight, have, you, inches. have you noticed nobody saying how many inches of rain we're getting anymore? Oh, I look it up every day. It's amazing. Yeah, but I mean, I, I, I have a wheelbarrow. One of those plastic Rubbermaid ones, you know, and, and it filled it all the way to the top Yeah, with the rain that we got, which is absolutely insane. But, I mean, it's not like we don't need it, but, I mean, I don't think we need – it's like drinking out of a fire hose. Well, you know, it's like I think um, going into that last storm down here, we were about 87% of the normal for this time of year. Right. Now it's like we're at 140 mm-hmm. percent of the normal this time of year. For the yearly, which ends on June 30th, we're already over 100 percent of that after this last week. Right. And your and your area compared to San Diego and and your area, you guys got the brunt of it. L. A. and and all the way through Paris, you guys seem to get the brunt of the of the storms. It rained where I live. I'm about 36 miles east uh, east of L.A., mm-hmm. 36 miles west of the track. And it, it started raining about 4 o'clock on Monday. I yeah. mean, good steady rain. And it rained about 47 straight hours, you know, with about a one-hour break in there. It was mm-hmm. crazy. I mean, my backyard was under three inches of water. My mm-hmm. dogs weren't going within three feet of the back door. <laughs> <I know. laughs> I have to walk out into the rain with one of my dogs or he won't go out. Uh, all three of mine aren't going. Yeah. And yeah. they don't go willingly even when you go out. Yeah, right. They're going, wait, what are you, crazy? We're not going out there. No, 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 no. Yeah. But uh, so no damage to the track other than, you know, once the rain runs off, it's fine, but no damage? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it just – it technically, and I wasn't there, I don't know how bad the half mile would have been. But mm-hmm. night of destruction, three of the classes run in the infield. Uh, the two-figure eight class, the mini stock, road oh, course. Yeah. You know, they run down there. So when they do that, um, and even, you know, if they got all the water pumped off, then you're dealing with how far down did the water go on the ground because it's going to be really, really soft and mushy. Mm-hmm. So that's the double whammy there. And those guys also pit out in the back pit area. Which, when that gets saturated, turns oh, into yeah. a big mess, too. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, if it was something that was on the half mile, there may have been a better chance of getting it in. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, they probably couldn't have pitted down there still, but there's another place we've used on the fairgrounds before, mm-hmm. uh, like the World of Outlaws USAC National Cars, where they pitted out on pavement, had a p- longer push to get the cars onto the racetrack, mm-hmm. but the track was fine. But the rest of the facility, there was no damage, nothing to the stands, the restrooms. I don't think so. I, You know, if there is, Don hasn't made me aware of it. Yeah. Well, I'm sure um, he would because he knows you're calling in. So, You know, he's not happy at all having to cancel a race, no. especially this early in the season. Right. So, uh, you know, it's now it's behind us. Uh, nothing move on. we can do. No use crying about it. Let's move on. Let's yeah, get just... ready for uh 410 sprint cars. So for the night of destruction enthusiast, when's the next scheduled hmm. date? It's just uh, three weeks, March 9th. Oh, well, that's not that far out. Yeah, three weeks from Saturday. So they're going to be, they're going to run this, I think this is the most night of destruction she's ever run. It was slated to be nine this year. Obviously, oh. it's down to eight now. So uh, it's going to be once a month. They usually run, normally they run the first race of the month, and then the sprint cars are going to be there every month as well. Mm, gotcha. 
All right. Well, then that then that works out fine. I just know. keep hearing uh, many nights of wonderful traction. I don't know, Desiree. When you hear about oh. rain in the forecast, do you do you have dreams of track perfect traction? Oh yeah, I oh. think it's perfect when it gets a little bit of rain. Yeah. We don't like things being rained out. No, but a little bit glass else. half full is yeah. nights of lots of traction. Right. Right. Well, like I said, right. you know, yeah, traction equals well, speed. Um, yeah. which isn't the isn't the greatest thing for sprint cars if the track is real tacky because everybody's too fast. There's not a lot of passing with sprint cars. <laughs> mm-hmm. so, good for the person out know, front. <laughs> say, is that with, uh, sprint, yeah, you want to draw the pole or qualify the pole, you're great. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the best fun. sprint car race to me, I mean, I don't want to see a Midwest Texas Dust Bowl, but a racetrack where there's a little bit of dust, usually with a sprint car means there's going to be three different groups on the track. Mm-hmm. And that makes a lot more passing. Hmm. Well, I tell you what, I can't wait for the season to get started, and I'm sure you can't either. Yeah, you know, once again, I mean, it's it was disappointing. It was a hard decision that Don had to make. Yeah. Um, but, you know, in the end, it ended up being the right one. I think most people got it. Um, you know, on top of the weather, when you're dealing with something like that, when it's been raining for days, um, some people may not show. It, you know, it wasn't exactly balmy weather out either. Right. So the wet conditions, you know, and the temperatures were supposed mm-hmm. to be, you know, by the end of the night when we would have finished like about 50 degrees. Um, yeah, a lot. The same Michigan. You know, a lot of people aren't willing to come out in that. Yeah, no kidding. Um, I, you know, I was going to ask you about the Young Guns. Uh, how many uh, how many uh, cars have you got in the Young Gun series? This year? I have no idea. You know, the wow. Young Guns, when we started, I think first year we averaged like 10, 11 cars and mm-hmm. stayed up there. Then it dropped off to the point where two years ago there was basically one car. Right. Uh, and then last year, I think we had eight different cars compete in that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they got a really good prize to shoot for this year. The uh, uh, gas chassis, called the gas chassis Young Gun Series. Mm-hmm. Champion's going to get a gas chassis, some extra components with Stan Sexton, who you had on the radio a few weeks ago. Right, right. So it's an incentive for them to get out there. Um, you know, some also, they want to run CRA. I'm not so sure... Um, you know, I think it would do a lot of them good to do more polishing running with uh, the young guns before they run with CRA. Because once you run a, young, a CRA race, you ain't running the young guns again. Oh, it disqualifies so, you? Yeah, you know, we, we did it the first year. Well, the first race we ever did it was 2013. And we had the young guns. And if anybody, you know, who ran CRA was young enough, which A.J. Bender was. Right. Uh you know, and he made the rest of the field look like fools. <laughs> so True. by the next week, Don just said, you know, if you're running CRA, you're not running the young guns. And that's been a steadfast rule uh-huh. ever since. Right. Yeah. I so, think that's a smart move. Yeah, it is. You know, and hopefully I think people, some people need to look at the big picture. And before they go running CRA, mm-hmm. if, you know, stay with the young guns, get more laps for an extra amount of time, you know, get you more lap time, more time on the track, more time mm-hmm. to race competitively rather in one of the reasons don started the young guns you'd have kids come out get a 410 sprint car and racing in the usac cra series and they're being fed to the lions right Ooh. yeah you know race with your own level mm-hmm. you know get competent there and then jump up and be ready to race with those tougher guys exactly i i totally agree yeah well De- don's definitely got his you know it, you know thumb on the pulse i mean he knows the right way and the wrong way yeah he does um you know but some people want to move up too fast in my yeah. opinion you know still to this day it, that happens and mm. hey, people need to think about that what's rayburn doing i don't know um i was wondering that the other day i was going to ask somebody yeah. um i've not heard from him or his dad and i know he's back out here in california yeah uh, yeah i thought you know, for sure yeah you know, race car I haven't seen him on so. I haven't seen him on social media. Uh, I haven't seen anything on him, and and his dad and him, boy. I mean, his dad was just hardcore getting this kid out there, and and you know, great interview. God, he was a good interview. 
yeah, the kid was a great talker and a good driver too. I thought he had had the had the skills. Yeah, he took his time, got up there in the right time. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. It's like his dad was kind of guiding him. Yeah, well, it'd be interesting. Well, if you do hear anything, you know, let us know because you know he was he was on here quite a bit with us. Yeah, he's a good kid, and um, hopefully we'll see him back in the spring. Hopefully this year. Yeah. I don't know. It'd be nice to have him back. Like you said, he's a great talker. He he loved being around the fans and stuff, which yeah. most of the people do. Sure. Um, and he was good for his advertisers. Boy, I mean, he always never missed a beat, always never. You know, I, I can still hear him say inland, inland rigging. If I've heard him say it once, I've heard him say it a thousand times. Yeah, there's a lot of people saying that now. Um, I'm working on a press release right as we speak on Tommy's team, which, you know, we put a release out last week where Brody Mm -hmm. had stepped aside from that team. Right. uh, Spent more time with his family. Right. And they do have two other drivers, and you can read about it hopefully later tonight or first thing tomorrow. Oh, good. Uh, One top-of-the-line driver for the 410 series and one top-of-the-line driver for the new series, and Tommy's going to run both of them. Wow. Uh, He won't run. I don't think he's going to run full-time with uh, Tommy Dunkel, I'm referring to, the owner. Right. right. I don't think he's going to run full-time with CRA, but he's going to run a bunch of the races, and he'll run full-time with their new series. Um, And the name slips me right now. They're going to run Ventura. Uh Bakersfield, Kern County. It's a 360 series with restricted 410s. He's going to do that. Um, said he may, you know, bring out some USAC national stars to run with the 410s when they have an opportunity. And, you know, he said, you know, hopefully Brody will make some cameo appearances in his cars as well in the future. God, yeah, let's hope so. All right, buddy. Hey, thank you very much for uh, taking time out of your Sunday. Now get back to work. Yeah, back to work. What fun. Yeah. All right, buddy. Take care. Thank you. All right. Paris Auto Speedway, folks. Mark it on your calendar. The schedule is at parisautospeedway.com. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, more with Desiree Bates and the Mint 400 on FM 9600 AM 1170. The answer. Welcome back to Racer Radio, FM 96.1 AM 1170. The answer. This segment is brought to you by Certified Car Clinic, 11370 North Woodside Avenue in lovely Santee. They will take care of all your automotive needs. you got an in-house dyno, they can do it all. And Weather Machine, if you've got an air conditioner or heating in your home and you haven't had it, uh, got its yearly service, Give these guys a call, 619-443-9974. Take very, very good care of you. They're family-owned and operated. They've been buddies of mine for a long time. I use them. They've got my – I bought an AC from them. Couldn't ask for better service. And the new system they sold me has literally saved me a ton when it comes to uh, heating and air. So Weather Machine right there at 9303 Bond Avenue in El Cajon. 619-443-9974 619-443-9974 or weathermachines.net. So we've still got Born Dirty, Desiree Bates in the house. That's me. Uh, early March is the Mint 400. Yeah, March so 9th is my race day. Around the corner. Mm-hmm. She's working out. I know. When he was talking about three weeks away for the, the sprint car racing, I was like, oh, that's three weeks away. <laughs> <laughs> um that, Something not about racing, but we can certainly get back to it because this is Racer Radio. But uh, if there was any woman uh, considering getting into the trades, what kind of advice would you give? Um, Where did you start? Like, uh, you're like, I want to do this. Where did you start? So, I mean, like I said, I wanted to be a welder. Um, So I didn't really necessarily want to go the electrical route. It's just a friend was telling me that if I liked a challenge, that the electrical trade would be a great challenge. And so he's not wrong. Um, I, I do enjoy it. Um, it is challenging at times, um, but it's a challenge that's, you know, doable. Um, I was afraid that being a female in the trade that I wouldn't be as strong as or as, you know, blah, 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 whatever. I didn't know that I would be able to get into it like a man would, you know. And so that was my fear. And since then, it's whatever. We do have to work harder, you know, like 
not we have to work smarter not harder I guess I should say so sometimes you can't lift things and you have to figure out an alternative way to do things so you do have to be smarter about things um, but I, I it's definitely doable I don't know why any woman would be intimidated by going into a trade um, because you were intimidated I, and that's what I'm saying like yeah. because I was intimidated and now I'm saying that there's no need so to be. you can be a spokesperson because once you begin to your uh, journeyman wage it's it's financially rewarding yeah. yeah where where would one start let's give them a concrete so i mean um as far as like getting the apprenticeship yeah so you need to take a test so you just call the hall and you would have to take a math test and um, a reading aptitude test basically pass that test and then you get an interview um, so any experience in the trades would be helpful um, but they're really encouraging women, obviously, mm -hmm. right now to get in the trades. So it's, you know, it's it's really a plus for women right now um, to get in. And I'm sure um, there's so. plenty of openings right now. Yeah, I mean, the, the work is good. Work is good. Mm -hmm. So it's good for everybody, not just women. But right, they right, are right. encouraging women, you know, and have a lot of programs out there to encourage women. And that's, I mean, I'm racing on the pretenses of encouraging women uh, because I also, I believe that because... I grew up um, off-roading. I mm -hmm. have an aptitude towards tools. I have a mechanical aptitude. I have Always held, have. Yeah, and I mean, I learned how to weld and um, stuff like that. So I, f I feel like women who race have more aptitude towards tools, mechanical mm -hmm. knowledge. Mm -hmm. So I feel, I feel like this really coincides with female racers mm -hmm. of all types, you know? And I think, you know, when you talk, and, and that, that's good that the, the unions are... You know, understanding that and and they need people just as bad as anybody else needs people yeah and they have their training program within yep. the union yes do you have to pay for that nope so wow. and then they also then are you working while you're an yes. apprentice yep so you could go in maybe just somebody carrying equipment around you know before you actually get it and then you go through stages so here's what happened i didn't get into the union when i first applied um they weren't as you know like I mean, it was, work was a little different. Um, so it, I had to work hard to get in. Um, and so I left my job at a radio station and made less money and doing a skill that I knew how to do as a tradesperson, and that was welding. So I went to an electrical shop and I offered my welding skills. I was like, mm -hmm. I can I can weld, you know? And so I, I prefabbed their safety cages and stuff like that, or I fabbed their safety safety cages and then they because I worked for a union electrical shop that helped me get into the apprenticeship so I then had a skill set to bring you know into my um into my apprenticeship okay I have to tell you a cute story mm -hmm. you'll love this so I'm up at hot rods and custom stuff talking to Randy and this kid comes rolling in he, he's telling me this and he just got out of uh welding school mm -hmm. and he wanted starting pay of 85 dollars an hour mm -hmm. And Randy says, really? He says, yeah. He says, I was uh, top of my class, yada, yada, yada. I says, okay, let's go out back. So he goes out back and he takes a piece of round stock and another piece of round stock. Mm -hmm. And he says, okay, weld it into a T. And the kid goes, no, no, I, don't, I can't do that. But I can weld a straight line <laughs> real, real well. Right. <laughs> So Randy says, well, you have a wonderful and you, day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right? $85 an hour. <laughs> and, yeah. And I, I, like knew, I knew of all people you would appreciate that story. On another note, Dirt Rider Foundation, do you have an event coming up? Yes. So um, I also am affiliated with San Diego Off-Road Coalition. I know Ed and Audrey have their radio show on here mm -hmm. on Sundays. Mm -hmm. um, they have been, through the years, um, kind enough to... Uh, take me under their wing. I started Fight for Rocketeer Wells. Um, and so it's been under the umbrella of the San Diego Off-Road Coalition for several years. And now I'm proud to announce that it's its own uh, nonprofit. So we are now called the Dirt Rider Foundation. Mm -hmm. um, and we are having a, our first desert cleanup March 23rd. So, March 23rd. yeah. Great. After the Mint 500, 400. Yep. So ah. yeah, we've got a busy March. <laughs> yeah, you'll be, uh, you'll be soaking in a hot tub someplace, I'm yeah. sure. Hopefully in Vegas. Yeah, hopefully in Vegas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we there set that up, Justin, in a hot tub on... After There's the no hot tub in the suite. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> You looked. It. You already looked. 
Well, yeah. some people believe in the cold bath. I've got a really good friend that starts her day like that. I was fishing out my doggie's bone uh, ball today from the pool, and I thought she could just go there. Yeah. Yeah, so if no. you need to, you can dunk yourself in my backyard. I don't, I'm it, not a fan of cold. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> so, me neither. So bucket list. You, you yeah. Put the 400 under your belt. Next. Then what? Yeah, good question. Um, you know, are you going to go to Mexico? I want to. Yeah. I mean, I think that that would be the next step. Um, well, let me give you a tip. Have you ever heard of the Nora? Yeah. Yeah. You tried to get me to do that a while ago. <laughs> and I'm still trying. <laughs> and the only reason I would tell you to try the Nora before you did say the Baja 500 or the 1000, it's on the east side of the peninsula mm-hmm. and it's not hardcore, but it's still hardcore yeah you start at seven in the morning and you get done about five at night and i guess the best way to explain it walker evans said yeah it's the first time i actually got to see the scenery oh really you know because when normally when you're racing you're not looking at the scenery yeah so i'm just saying you might want to consider that one you know before you go into something else yes are you done yeah, I'm uh, wondering because I know I'm going to want to follow your experience of the Mint 400 um, social media presence. How or, can listeners? You can find me on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, I, I'm not the TikTok type, you no, know, so yeah. I don't really care about that. So it's just Born Dirty MX. That's also my website, borndirtymx.com. I'm also selling uh, five six nine um, shirts and well shirts currently um, for to help out this whole year of racing, basically, oh, cool. and to promote my sponsors again. And they can get those shirts online? Mm, BornDirtyMX.com. Justin, can you make sure that she gives us an update on how the mint goes? Definitely will be. All right. Because you're in charge of that now, too. <laughs> don't don't well, worry. I mean, you could. She's out for a while until she comes back. So I know this is very short term, but do you, Justin, do you have any desires to race? Never. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. You say that so matter of yeah. fact. Did Not we, everybody does. Did we fall off at one time when you were younger? <laughs> or no. it's just something you just never were interested in? No. I. Uh, or do I've you like been, crewing? I like crewing. I've mainly okay. gone out to the desert to cruise. Right. And I've barely spent a couple years on two wheels. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've been on three wheelers for the majority. Ah. So yeah, I've had those. switching to two wheels, it was, it was a change up. But yeah. I've yeah, only yeah. been riding for a couple years on two oh, okay. wheels. So. All right. Very good. Yeah. All right. Well, I look forward to hearing about this adventure. Thank I you. want to follow along. If she's not telling us, Justin, it's going to follow you. She'll tell you. She's going to be busy. We'll, we'll, we'll be be she's going to be tired. She's going to be recovering. She's going to be getting ready for the cleanup. I also uh, post race recaps on borndirtymx.com so all that right. all my sponsors get their shout outs and they can follow along and see how my racing is going. And, um, you know, they know that I'm out there actually doing it. It was nice sitting down with you. Thank you guys Very for having nice. me on. Justin, nice. thanks for coming in. Thank and, you. And I'll keep you up to date as to because whatever we're doing, so I'd like to be able to get you and the union on you know local television so that they can, you know, people can see, and you know maybe we can you know we just did a small show just on apprenticeship program. Yeah. Maybe we can get the union to come in for like an hour and Definitely. talk and go apprenticeships. Yeah, go. Yes. I think they're. Absolutely. And I just really quick just want to say that uh, the IBEW has been like instrumental in my racing this year. However, I'm just so proud that, you know, other trades like, you know, metal uh, welding trades have been stepped behind me, have been behind me as well. So, So I'm just encouraging, you know, a trade. You know. Yeah, that's it. Crazy yeah, general. if you don't want to go to college, if you have no desire, a thousand, hundred thousand dollar student loan. Yeah, yeah. And end and up the pay work, is good. And end up working at McDonald's and yeah. without using your your college, try an apprenticeship program. Totally. All right, this is Racial Radio FM ninety six one AM eleven seventy. The answer.